Hi everyone, hope you're doing well from whatever you're watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now, Kenyans have been complaining about William Ruto's trip to the United States of America, and their complaint is not Ruto visiting the states, it's all about how Ruto got to the United States of America. What it is going to cost the taxpayers money. Now, traditionally, on a state visit, it is the host country that normally clear uh, all the, the, the standing debts or if there is any, um, any cost in card on that travel. But we were told by the United States of America Embassy in Kenya that uh, they are not responsible for Ruto's uh, travel to U.S. in terms of paying the jets he used a luxury jet Boeing 737700 business jet it is a business jet that is going to cost 2 million per hour and that is a total cost of 200 million Kenyan shillings an equivalent of 1.5 million US dollar so we've been complaining here as Kenyans the local media here they have been you know airing out that information and finally the international media houses are picking the story so instead of discussing Rudolph's achievement in US local and international media they are discussing the cost in card to facilitate Rudolph's travel to the US the number of delegates the entourage more than 30 people including comedians the international media is discussing that. They even go deeper on how Ruto has been spending what we've been referring to a global trotting president. He's in this country, he's here, he's there, overspending. But again, above all, the big issue is about how Kenyans are being taxed. He has been increasing taxes every time. But then the question is, eh, are we able are we able to manage afford basic uh, you know things in this country it is also a problem to afford this basic thing because they are being taxed so instead of airing out the achievement of William Ruto it's all about how Ruto is abusing the taxpayers' money in his visit to the U.S. About their president, William Ruto, who is on a state visit to the U.S., it's the first state visit by a Kenyan president in over two decades, the first since 2003. It's also the first time in 16 years that an African leader is on a U.S. state visit. So it is quite significant, but that's not what's, what it's making news for. President Ruto is being slammed. Not because he's in the U.S., but because of how he chose to get there. He decided to fly in a luxury jet. He chartered a Boeing 737-700 business jet from an Emirati company, the Royal Jet Group. He hired it for about 200 million Kenyan shillings. That's one and a half million U.S. dollars. Ruto pulled out all the stops. He brought along an entourage of more than 30 people, which includes a famous Kenyan comedian. Everyone traveled to the U.S. in style on the Kenyan taxpayer's dime. And this, more than anything else, has triggered the backlash. Now, some of you may wonder, what is the big deal here? After all, world leaders travel all the time. It's part of the job description. They need to travel to build relations and to negotiate trade deals. In the long run, the trip should more than pay for itself. And all of this may be true. And it's exactly what Ruto is using as his defense. But that has not helped quell public anger. Why? Because of Ruto's policies. He's been tough on Kenyan taxpayers. He became president in 2022, and he has been increasing taxes ever since. Ruto has increased the tax rate on salaries. He has doubled the sales tax on fuel. He has introduced a housing levy, a hospital insurance levy, and a turnover tax on small businesses. If it moves, Ruto taxes it. All in the name of fiscal responsibility. Kenya has a mountain of national debt. It is worth over... 
it was rather worth over $51 billion as of last December. Ruto had pledged to fix this. That is why he keeps raising taxes. And obviously, this is not a popular move. It puts an added burden on Kenyan citizens who are already struggling with the cost of living crisis and the rising cost of essential food items. In this situation, imagine hearing that your president is flying around in an Emirati jet. The same president who's been raising your taxes who's been preaching austerity. That same president is taking more than 30 people, including a comedian, to the U.S. So you can see why the, the Kenyan people are angry. And this is not the first time, apparently. A few months ago, Ruto was dubbed Kenya's flying president. He's been on more than 50 foreign trips since he took office in 2022, more than three every month on average. In the year up to July 2023, He'd spent about 9.2 million US dollars on travel, both domestic and international, 9.2 million. Now, this latest US trip alone will cost Kenya one and a half million dollars. For all the talk about austerity, Ruto's expenses just seem to be growing. So to calm the public down, he needs to have something to show for all of this, which is why this US trip needs to bear fruit. Ruto will have his official meeting with Joe Biden tomorrow. They're supposed to discuss a number of issues ranging from troop deployments in Haiti to extending a free trade agreement. Kenya's trade minister says that they have prepared more than 30 bankable projects. They're worth over $20 billion. Ruto will pitch these to American investors. If he can land a big deal, people may forget about the luxury jet. If not, he could be in trouble. Now, we are continuing this panel discussion, but just a quick request. For those who are watching and you have not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. To our returning subscribers, I must say thank you so much. And again, to all our viewers, please give this video a thumbs up. By the way, when you give a thumbs up, that's how you also support uh, this program here. Because then definitely, YouTube is going to recommend these videos to more viewers, and that's how we grow. So make sure you help us in one way or another to reach to more people. Thank you so much and back to this discussion. Now, when we complain here about William Ruto abusing taxpayers' money, some people will say that it's just political. But if it reaches a level whereby now the international media houses like BBC, CNN, Al Jazeera, you know, talk about all of them. When they pick such story, then you should know that there are issues. And indeed there are issues. Ruto has been tough on taxpayers in this country. He's overtaxing everything. You know, small, medium enterprise has been taxed. It, it, to start a business here in Kenya is a trouble. Salaries is being overtaxed. Fuel levy, it is there. Housing levy, houses that we will never occupy because we pay taxes. Hospital insurance. You talk about anything. So until now, the international media is now, you know, you know, tagging this Ruto that if it moves, Ruto taxes it. If it moves, Ruto taxes it. Chochote janyake na pita mbele yaki. And I want any tax. Everything to him is all about money. That's why they were going to an extent of even thinking to sell KICC. But the reason why KICC was put up, it was not to make money directly. It was indirectly uh, a way to make money or bring resources to the country. Saying so that people will have business, they will trade when they have such kind of meetings happening there, people will still spend. And through those taxes, the country will be well. But because he wanted money, he think even of selling everything here. But I said also were listed for sale just because he's looking for money. So the big question on this pipeline is no longer about how you tax us. It is about how you spend our taxes. Uhuru Kenyatta was using a budget that Kenyans expected Ruto will use the same budget at his set house. Instead, what Uhuru, the prince, a man they refer to as dynasty, 
what he was using in one year time, Ruto is spending the same amount in six months time. Then he's forced to go for a supplementary budget. We never saw who we going for supplementary budget. He worked within the budget he was given. That means Uhuru was living within our means. But Ruto has refused to live within our means. Instead, he is abusing taxpayers' money on hospitality and recurrent budgets. Ni mishahara na mamba ya hospitality. Recurrent budget. But when it comes to development, we are not there. Though we are being overtaxed. So, definitely, Ruto anamulikwa kwa sababu ya kutumia ushuru wa wananchi kwa njia mbaya. Ingekuwa anafinyilia wananchi kwa njia hii na tuone the same reflecting in infrastructure. Then at least as we make noise, we will understand that there is something happening. Therefore, Ruto will be justified. But Ruto is not justified to go and hire, you know, a luxury uh, uh, a job, a jet to use it to, fl to, to fly to US. What if he don't achieve all the plan he has in terms of negotiating for business here in Kenya? What if he don't achieve? And of course, you can't achieve everything. There is give and take. So, in Kenya here, we are struggling to pay school fees, we are struggling with our medical. We are struggling to pay doctors. We are struggling in so many ways. Floods are here. People have died. No compensation. They give promise of 10,000. Nothing is given to these people. But we see president splashing money. Huge entourage. Placing few at expense of taxpayers. Ruto is listening more to the IMF than he listened to the taxpayer. So IMF, when they give direction, he follows. But they don't listen to the man who, and the woman who is supposed to pay these taxes. Between IMF and the Kenyans, who is going to pay? Between IMF and the Kenyans, who are voters? He don't listen to anyone. So definitely, everyone is seeing how Ruto is abusing our taxes. And that's why international media houses are picking this story.